Welcome back to the Free Melon Society, everyone. I am Eli, thank you so much for joining me again. And in today's class, we're gonna be targeting rice. And we're gonna be conducting a little home experiment to show you exactly what the true nature of rice really is that you, prior to this video, may not have understood. So, just like the meat mucus video that we did earlier, we're gonna be breaking it down in the kitchen with heat so that you can see exactly what the constituents of the rice are once the water has taken on its properties and we'll show you just how insuitable rice is for your system, okay? So let's jump right to the experiment. So as you see, I've got some rice here. Now, this isn't white rice. It's not, you know, conventional uh, bleached and refined, highly processed rice. No, this is just raw whole grain rice, okay? Just raw whole grain rice, you know, the healthy kind of rice, apparently. So we're gonna add in some water. I will be adding in more water uh, eventually, but start boiling this rice and you know, see, see what happens from there. We're probably about 10 to 15 minutes in right now, and so you know, it's starting to go. Okay, this is about half an hour in, if I'm not mistaken. The rice is starting to soften up. The water's starting to change color, and you know, some of that rice content is starting to be absorbed by the water. Okay, about 45 minutes or so in, and so yeah, now you can see I've turned down the heat just slightly. Notice how the water is turning that creamy type of color, right? As this continues, what's going to happen is the water will get stickier and stickier and slimier. It's doing that because the nature of the rice is sticky and slimy. It's very, very dense and fibrous in there, which of course is why you can't eat rice raw. You need to disintegrate all that before it's quote unquote palatable. Okay, so here we've got further and further breakdown. As you can see, the rice is getting softer, losing its dense fibrous nature, and the water is picking it up. Okay, so we're about an hour in right now. Now remember, most people when they cook rice, they won't be cooking it this long. People will take out the rice way before it gets to this super gooey state. I mean, unless it's a particular recipe that calls for it, but we want to cook it for a bit more time because we're trying to emulate what's happening in your GI tract as this completely disintegrates, right? So let's just go. Okay, I think we're done here. So we can turn this off. We're just gonna dump the rice out into a strainer and we're gonna keep the water because the water has taken on all the, all the properties of the rice. And we're gonna let that cool for a bit and then we're gonna examine what the water looks like and that'll give you a good idea of how this is breaking down in your system, okay? So just as a quick recap for those of you that are new to this channel, there are only two food groups that are natural to the human body that do not break down improperly and leave behind waste, metabolic waste, and mucus residue in the system. Fruits and vegetables are the only two foods that break down properly in the human digestive system. Even nuts are acidic, all right, and they leave behind an acidic waste. Fruits and vegetables do not do that. When it comes to eating grains, when you eat a grain, the grain breaks down and leaves behind a sticky mucus residue in the system. They cause immense trouble for the GI tract. Every time you break down a starch, there's an acidic byproduct associated with that starch. And your body has to tax and it has to labor to get rid of that. The sort of labor that is not necessary when you eat the natural foods like green leaf vegetables and fruits. So right here, I'm just trying to stir it around a little bit. Now you can see at the bottom, look, look at the stuff that's coming out of, the, out of the strainer. It's literally like glue. Okay, here we go. Here's a nice zoomed in shot of this and I believe I've got some more stuff to say. Okay. Now we've got our straining rice. Now watch what happens. So I'm gonna point the camera underneath so you can see the goo this stuff produces. Okay, ready? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm mm mm. Again, uh, this goopy substance bears a an uncanny resemblance to the kind of mucus that pours out of your nose, your throat, whenever you're sick. And if you're sick, what does that mean? It just means it's your body trying to throw off the poisons that you put into it, whether you know it or not. So your body doesn't care whether you think something is healthy for you. Natural law takes over and it gives you and yields you the effects that you bring on yourself. Okay, so this is the rice husk. I'm going to show you what this rice water looks like. Bammo. Look at this. This is the gooey, again, 
just like the meat experiment that we did in our other video, this gooey substance is just, uh, is so bad for you. I mean, if you try to live on just rice, like this, for a certain period of time, you'll see what I mean. And you'll, you'll tell me, oh my god, Eli, I, I wish I listened to you. I'm going to show you a quick clip of a documentary about Indonesia. Now there's a father that's interviewed in this clip and he's describing his living conditions, how his children are sick and ill, how he has no money, and also describes his diet and what he eats, what his family eats. And it is no surprise that these people, it, it's so funny because what we want to do is we want to give them aid and we want to give them food, but the stuff that we give them perpetually enslaves them to a lifetime of sickness because the foods these people eat, even though they're poor and even though they're undernourished and they don't have much, right? They're eating the wrong food. And so they think that it's a lack of medicine or that it's a lack of Western care or it's a lack of governmental care. And it is, I'm, I'm not taking away from that. These people are in horrible conditions, but the misery is compounded by these people's complete ignorance, not in a derogatory sense, of what humans are supposed to eat. Half this man's monthly wage of less than 40 pounds goes on medical treatment for his children who suffer from a serious blood disorder. Yang pertama dia menderita sakit. Jadi tiap bulan dia harus transfusi darah. Akhir bulan itu pucat kayak sekarang contohnya. Bibirnya udah pada putih dua-duanya. Jadi tandanya kita saya sakit itu enggak masuk kerja ya udah apa boleh buat paling kita Okay, let's stop right there. Children that require blood transfusions has nothing to do with the medicines that they are deprived of. Children that require blood transfusions is a progression of disease that has been brought on by erroneous eating and lifestyle habits. I know they're poor. I'm not condemning them because of their bad choices. I'm just using this example to illustrate to you how the things that you eat and the things that you drink play a huge role in your health. So most of the money he earns is going towards his medical bills. Okay, so we haven't even finished the video. What exactly were they eating? Sweet tea and milk. Whose milk? A cow's milk? If you're already malnourished and you start drinking cow's milk, upon what nourishing substance can your body draw for proper building and maintenance of its tissues? The growth fluid of a 400 pound, 500 pound animal? It's meant for its babies? What else did these guys eat? Yang penting sekarang kan alhamdulillah bisa ketemu buat berobat. Biar walaupun kita makan. There it is, plain rice and salted fish. Now she says that as if to suggest that even though all we eat is the simple healthy rice and fish, we still somehow need medical treatment. I'm not condemning these people because they live under the crushing hammer of imperial society. I'm not talking about that. I'm using this as an example to illustrate to you how what I just showed you in the experiment is so destructive to your health that even if you only eat that and maybe another item like fish, which again is not meant for you, you will be sick. Your children will be sick. This is not human food and you will pay the consequences for eating this garbage. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? Saying, eating very very little is one of the healthiest things that you can do if you go back and you read the ancient Gnostic texts of the Essene people 500 BC before Christ if I'm not mistaken these people were so pure so moral so clean everything about these people spoke of the highest degree of development in thought and feeling and behaviors okay the Essenes understood what good diet was right it was almost common practice for an Essene to eat maybe once every three days, four days, five days. If they did eat more often than that, then they would have one small meal a day, maybe, right? These people weren't sick. They didn't need blood transfusions. They were perfectly healthy in mind, in body, and in spirit. Now, the difference between these people who eat just as little as these people in Indonesia is that the Essenes understood what good diet was and proper natural hygiene. And these poor people don't understand. Now, a lot of people are gonna say that, oh, well, we throw out the water, right? We don't really keep the water when we cook rice. And so, you know, I would never be putting this in my system. 
Okay, you're wrong. I cooked this until it was super soft so that all of the constituents of the rice went into the water. Now, if you don't cook your rice until this point, then these gooey constituents will still be locked up inside of the rice when you eat them. These materials will be released once inside your system. The only difference here is with my more inefficient method of just heat, I've tried to extract them before they enter your body. Okay, so that's the difference. So if you think that this stuff you're throwing away when you cook your rice, nuh-uh, think again. This is what you put in your system. It's not food. Okay, well, it looks like Eli pretty much said everything that I wanted to get across in this video. You know, these grains are not natural to your body. They're not natural to the human physiology. You require them to be broken down and obliterated completely before you can even think of putting them in your mouth. You put some wild grains of rice in your mouth and try to eat them, yeah, good luck, right? Not a chance. Not a chance. All that mucusy crap, all that metabolic waste that you saw in that bowl, yeah, well guess what? All that junk is in your system and it's just getting trapped there and it's causing slow movement of the GI tract. It's causing some indigestion. It's causing, I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. Anyway, hope that visually gave you something in this little home experiment. Maybe next time we can do another food breakdown, but for now that's it. Thank you very much for sitting in on this lesson and we'll see you next time on the Free Melon Society. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, right? We've got, of course, many, many, many important topics that we're gonna be covering. So, you know, stay ahead of all the cultural lies and delusions. Subscribe to the channel so that you can take your health and wellness into your own hands. And if I can help, then I will do everything in my power to do so. Thank you so much again, guys, and we'll see you next time.